today we're talking about anvils. If you haven't guessed that already, I'm just going to put this down and then we can get going. Okay, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to the shop. It's awesome to have you here today. Today we're going to be talking about anvils. I figured, you know, we should just touch base on some more basic stuff here, just in case you're just starting out in your blacksmithing and want to get going. Um, obviously, you probably already know what an anvil is, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about what the anvil is. We'll just briefly go over it today, so then in the future, I can just do short series of working at the anvil, some techniques that you should learn and do, and then we can just kind of carry that out as we continue to learn. So when I first started out blacksmithing, obviously I did not have a power hammer, and so I spent a lot of time at the anvil, and I didn't realize that that was really benefiting me long term. I was doing things that I would have really enjoyed doing under the power hammer because they were hard, like drawing out a pair of tongs out of three quarter inch square bar. I can still remember just wailing on that thing all day long to get that first pair of tongs. But what I was building is I was building hammer control and just muscle too, which is super important. Something that it's just carries you a long ways. So the value of learning something at the anvil is definitely worth the investment into it. So don't be discouraged, you just gotta go after it. It takes a long time and it's hard work, but it's a skill, right? Okay, so first up, I'm pretty sure you know what an anvil is. It's basically just a huge chunk of steel. Put your hot steel on top and you come in with a hand hammer and forge it. There's a lot of different styles within the category of anvil, even though they're really not that different when you look at it. Like sure, as a technical blacksmith aspect, kind of geeking out on the anvil, you can really, oh, this one's like this, this one's like that. But at the end of the day, it's not that much difference. So I'm just gonna quickly go over a couple of the things I feel like we should just be on the same base about like horn, face, etc. And then we can jump into techniques and getting on that in the future. So first up is styles of anvils. Um, there's different styles. I have a London style pattern, it's a Peter Wright anvil. That's what I have in this shop, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about anything else because I don't have it and you can figure that out. I will say, that if you're looking at purchasing your first anvil, like any anvil you have is better than no anvil, but obviously uh, you don't want a cast iron anvil, that's really bad. You're better off with just a big chunk of steel in that case. But if you're getting into anvils, uh, forged anvils are really desirable. Even though cast steel, anvils are pretty good too. How it works with my Peter Wright anvil and forged anvils is everything except the face is wrought iron, so it's actually soft. So the horn is soft, the waist is soft, the feet are soft, and then they actually forge weld on this hard piece of steel, like 3 8 half an inch, on the top, and that makes it robust and strong. So you'll see on some anvils, it's either chipped, it's separated, um, that can be an indication that it's a forged anvil. As long as the plate is on there good, you don't have anything to worry about. My little Peter right here, you can actually start to see where that plate is chipped off and separated, indicating that it's a forged anvil, but I mean, there's other things to know about that, that it's forged. So anyways, the way that you measure an anvil is typically by the weight. They used a British stone system, I think. I'm not actually really fluent in, in how that works. How you convert the stone system into pounds is you take the first number, and if it's one, for example, that'd be 112 pounds. Then you take the next number, if it's two, it's 28 pounds, and then you take the final, the last number, and you just add it on, and that should equal your pound system. So my anvil is 213, and that equals 255 pounds. So that's a, there's lots of literature on that. I don't really need to touch deep on that. You, you can figure that out, but that's a great way to know. So quickly, let's do the walkthrough on the anvil. You have the distinct front of the anvil, which is the horn, that's where you forge, like bend things around. That's probably the, like horseshoes. That would be your most iconic use of it. Then the horn slides into the table typically, and the table is used for cutting things off. It's soft material. So when you cut through, you don't damage your chisel and you don't wreck the face of your anvil. That's really important. And then usually there's a step up and then that is your face. And then on the face, you have the edges and the edges of the anvil are really important because you use them for half set, setting down, you use them for a whole bunch of things. The ideal situation is that you have a, a larger radius up to a, a tighter, crisper corner. Now that really depends on uh, the condition of the anvil. So 
the smoother and the nicer those lines are in that transition, you're usually paying more for it. I have some anvils that are really chewed up and then my main one, I wouldn't say it's great, but it's okay. So once you get past your edges, then you have the square hole, which is called the hardy hole, and that's for dropping tools in or for bending steel. There, again, multiple uses for it. And then you have the pitch hole, hole which is the round hole, typically used for punching holes. And then you have the heel, the heel on the back, and that is what you use for, you know, bringing pieces of material like a fork, for example, if you had to get around there. Um, it's just thinner material and it's really great. Okay, so that's a really quick overview of the anvil and some of the things that you need to know about it. We're gonna jump into next week. Actually, wait, hmm, it might not be next week. It'll be very soon and I will just be doing um, techniques that you can learn at the anvil and then uh, we'll build upon those. Just something a little bit different than maybe the power hammer stuff, even though I kinda love the power hammer stuff, truth be told. But I think it's, again, it's just really important to be able to learn these hand techniques at the anvil the more time you spend there, the better you're gonna be as a blacksmith, that's for sure. Again, short and sweet. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Please like this video if you found it useful, and we will see you in the next one.